All right, let's get this started. Okay, I'm gonna make this hell quick. Incredibles 2. The really big pluses I saw in the movie, the sound was nice. I really liked the sound. I, I don't know why. This is the first movie in a while where I thought the sound was fucking amazing. It's one of the few movies where I noticed it more than anything else. The music, the sound, the foley, everything. I really enjoyed about it. I was like, God damn, I want to listen to this movie again, technically. <laughs> uh, another plus is the revisiting of characters. You know, if you watched the first one and felt like a little empty because you want to see more of like Dash or Violet or Mr. Incredible or even, you know, Helen, Elastic Girl. I don't know why I called her by her first name. I don't know, just something about the family chemistry makes them watchable. I, yeah. Um, the short film before was really cute, um, and tugs at the heartstrings like any other Pixar short, I guess. It has to have you emotionally attached, that's what makes them so successful. The short was about a brief summary, I don't know if you care about spoilers, but I'm adding it in here. I forgot what it was called, uh, I'll probably put it up on screen right now, but it's about like a mom and she... Um, I want to say she's Korean, I don't know, uh, but it's an ethnic uh, short and it shows her making dumplings, I believe. I, I don't know, I'm, I'm an uncultured swine, so I don't know too much about food. Um, and she's making them and the dumpling comes to life and she starts raising the dumpling and it becomes like a, uh, I forget the word for it, like an, a symbolism for her son. And I guess it's like a dream, and then she wakes up, and the sun's there, and, you know, it was really well written, I think, the story. But, you know, what do you expect from Pixar's arsenal of fucking, <laughs> of, of shorts and fucking awards? Yeah, I'm trying not to cuss. Um, okay, uh, the visuals, oh, you got, you know, with every film, you know, visuals are always gonna get better. Um, you know, if you look at the movie, the first one that was made in 2004 compare it to this one there's some things that do look similar i feel like they try to keep some of the continuity in it but like other things like i saw i noticed like the asphalt some of the cars it's just like it was really on point there's some times where i was looking at like i don't know the scene at um at that one the the criminal's hideout where she's just looking down the hall and everything just looks so crisp i had that same realization when i was watching coco like, you know, with every movie, there's always, like, such a huge leap in graphics and visuals, and that's and that's another plus to, to watch the movie. And on the negatives, <clears throat> the character design, Jesus Christ. Um, in the first film, they talk about how they, they make each, um, in the behind the scenes in the first film, they talk about how they make each character um, unique and and weird looking how mr incredible's eyebrows you know they they go like it, it it's such good character design but this time around just i did not like certain characters um i don't know if they had the same character designer i'll probably look that up and i'm right or wrong on screen but the character design was just so freaking bad in the beginning you know there's these two people that offer i forget the freaking names you know i just know them by their face describe them um, names should be remembered, but are irrelevant to me right now. Um, the face of, like, the sister of the brother of the big fucking company. She looks like a fucking villain. From the beginning, I if, if I mentioned every single thing that came through the head, I'd be talking about the film for ten minutes for every two minutes that pass by. That, that's just me. But the character designs do not match. Like... Some of them looks like they try to match characters like um, the Vo Void, I think her name was. She's, you know, she has her goofy charm, like everyone else has certain traits or qualities about them that make them stand out. But as mentioned in the previous movie... I think the characters look wildly different from one another, but I think they all feel part of the same universe. They all look like they're a part of the same universe. When I look at The Incredibles 2, all the characters, there's some characters that do fit. They're like, yeah, they belong in the universe. They belong like, they, there's continuity. But then when I look at the brother and sister, it's just like, they, they feel like they were just guest starring from another fucking movie or another show or something. I don't, I don't like, I don't, 
I don't like that. There's like, there's this feeling of discontinuity. There's a, like, they're from a different universe. Like, there's universes colliding or some bullshit. Um, another thing that really ticked me off was the time it took. I think it was like 14 years, if I'm right. In 2004, it came up the first one. I did not expect a sequel. The ending of the first one was just like open ended. You know what? Oh, okay, they're going on different adventures. It felt like an episodic movie. You know, like oh, this is just one chapter of their life. I didn't expect a sequel, but I don't know if it was intentional or not. But starting off where the last movie ended was nice. It's great. I, I love it. But I did not expect a sequel to start off. You know, like um, it was nice, but. It wasn't something that I demanded, you know. I'd rather have a freaking a sequel to Monsters Inc. You know, the ending was like freaking uh, solely opening the door, solely, solely, solely opening the door, and you hear the girl say "boo," or not "boo." And no, he's like "boo," and the girl goes, and that's just that begs for a sequel. That right there begs for a sequel. You want to know what happens, what's going to happen with that story. And yeah, just the whole, it didn't need a sequel. That was another point. I felt like it didn't need a sequel. The only reason why you would want to watch this movie is to watch it with your families, have a good laugh. And um, it's not, I mean, don't look for anything too deep. It's not something you like, oh shit, um, has, this movie f works on multiple levels. It's just there to entertain and to... Uh, show you another day in the life of the Incredibles and why you would want that it's because they're such an interesting family dynamic and that's it that's it you know just it's visual eye candy that's all it is just recently watched my other Pixar uh, rant or video I did like two years ago or whatever I gave Inside Out a, a, a 8.5 I, I, I revoke that and give it a 7.5 and give that to the Incredibles because Incredibles I feel like I could watch over and over again while well, Inside Out I could probably watch maybe once every five years <laughs> I mean it's it's not a bad movie it's just like not one I'm really particularly interested in and uh, that, that wraps it up uh, thanks for watching and um, see you later bye